so it's a little windy up here. Hope you can hear me fine. Whew. It's just gone 2 a.m. and I've made it up to Second Valley. It's been a few months since I was here last and this is the first time that I'm attempting some astrophotography up here. Oh. Getting up this hill takes it out of you a bit. So, at least in the southern hemisphere, in the middle of winter you get the arch of the Milky Way stretching from north to south across the sky. So about now, at a, well say midnight, that Milky Way arches pretty much directly overhead. And if you look directly up in the sky, you see the galactic core. And then as you approach sunrise, the arch still stays stretching about 180 degrees uh, across the sky, but the apex of the arch dips lower and lower to the horizon until at about 5 a.m. or so, it's pretty much just a band of stars flat across across the horizon. So I'll tell you a little bit more about my plan in a minute, but I'm just finding the right place to take these photos. Oh god. I swear. I, I think I'm fitter than this. I'm here though. I'm at the top of the hill. Oh. Just gonna take a second. Ooh. So there are these hills at Second Valley. Uh, I have a previous video where I was up here quite a bit um, for some sunrises and sunsets. And pretty much they overlook the town of Second Valley just over there. And then there's a bit of a, a bluff, you know, a few hills. And then the, the Milky Way arch is stretching across the sky. And I'm hoping that uh, once I get the camera on and, and snap a few shots, I should be able to get a really nice 180 degree panorama. Um, the only thing I'm worried about is that the town is down there. They've got some street lights. It's, it's a tiny, tiny town, but they've got some street lights. And I just hope they don't blow out too much. Really, I think the most interesting uh, mountains, the most interesting landscape is actually behind me, but there's no beautiful Milky Way arch over there. I'll probably point the camera in that direction anyway, but I think for most of tonight I'm going to be looking this way. But for now, I should probably stop talking to camera and, uh, and actually start taking some photos. And tonight I've got my camera bag with my camera in there, I've got the tripod. I also have this bag full of snacks and water. I got some, some hot tea in there. It's actually pretty nice out here tonight. I think it's about 12 degrees. I brought my gloves, but I don't think I will need them. I also brought my chair, but I think I'm going to be moving around way too much to bother pulling that out. All right, first composition coming up. Okay, I'm just taking my first test shot. Hopefully it'll give you a bit of an idea of what I'm going for here. Uh, if I'm honest, the landscape isn't as central. It isn't placed uh, sort of in the middle of the arch as I was hoping it was going to be. But it's pretty close and it's looking like it's going to be quite nice. So this shot's really just to sort of dial in my composition. I'll probably do a few like this until I get it about right. Uh, this is wide open at 16mm f2.8. Uh, 20 seconds. I threw the ISO up to 12,800, a bit high, um, and white balance is, I think, cool fluoro, which is my go-to for astrophotography because it usually looks pretty great on the back of the camera, 
and it's just nice to see that and feel good about what you're taking photos of. Like I said, I'll take a few more test shots. I was considering for some that I might need to zoom in a little, but for this, I'll have to check, make sure that the, uh, the top of the arch doesn't get cut off. Um, at the same time, I don't want too much boring space on the bottom of my image. And I don't want this to be too wide and thin a panorama. I don't want super skinny panoramas pretty much. Anyway, I'll just take a couple more and let you know what I think. So this is my next test shot. I'm happy with the amount of space above the Milky Way and also in the foreground. So what I've done now is I've put the ISO down to 6400 and put the lens to f8. I'm obviously focused on the stars, which at one point would have been infinity on this lens, but I've dropped it a few times and now focusing on the stars is about, apparently, according to the back of the camera, three meters away. And I've leveled my tripod as, as well as I can. So as I rotate the tripod head, it's, it's pretty much level the whole way around. So I'm gonna start taking photos over there where the Milky Way touches the horizon uh, in the north and then I'm going to finish pretty much uh, exactly in the opposite direction where it touches the horizon in the south. I think I'm going to do uh, sets of 10 images. So rather than the pressing the shutter and it taking five consecutive images, I'm going to switch it over to the intervalometer and I'm going to set that to 10 images. Like I think like five usually seems like enough, but this feels like a very special image. I want to make sure I'm getting rid of as much of the noise as possible. So stacking 10 images and then stitching that together to make a panorama, that should be a pretty clean image by the time I'm done. So uh, it's time to start, because I've got a few more to do after this. I think the camera, I think it's doing it's like the fourth tile and 200 seconds is a lot of time. So I think uh, for the future panoramas I do tonight, I don't know, I might reduce it to, I don't know, 10, 15 second exposures rather than 20 second exposures. Because it feels like it's taking forever. Just sitting around makes me cold. I need to be moving. And you know, as the minutes tick by, that Milky Way is dropping lower and lower towards the horizon. Not necessarily a bad thing, but I do have at least two more compositions that I want to get done. And I don't want to be out here too long. I would like to go to bed at some point this morning. Alright, took a little uh, messing around but I've worked out this particular panorama. I'm at about oh, somewhere between 16 and 20 mil. I just wanted to crop in a little more because the, uh, the Milky Way is getting a little lower in the sky. I didn't need so much uh, space above it or so much foreground. Um, the tripod is also almost all the way extended in height because this little area is more sheltered from the wind, so I don't have to worry about uh, it being shaken while it's taking the photos. I think it's going to be quite a nice little shot. The light from the jetty is reflecting in the water, so you can make out more of the waves and of the rocky uh, of the rocky shore. And then, sort of behind me, well, not that you can see where I'm facing anyway. Uh, the second hill is going to be towards the left of the image and I think just to make this one even a little more interesting uh, once I've done all the images for the panorama I'm going to center the second hill up there in the frame and I'm going to set the timer on and I'm going to run up there with my head torch and I'll do the whole 
standing on a hill looking at the stars with my head torch on full bore thing. Uh, it's a bit silly. I'm just keeping the light off because I'm right next to the camera. But I'm just taking the last set of images, the, the furthest left images, and then once they're done, I'm going to turn it back to face that hill. I did the maths. I'm going to set the intervalometer to go off in 40 seconds and I'm going to set a timer on my phone for three minutes. I'm going to push the button, push the timer and then I'm going to run up the hill and hopefully I get there within 40 seconds, head torch on as bright as it can go and I just stand still until the timer goes off and that will have been the 10 images with the exact same settings as all the previous images taken. Alright, that's looking good. Time to get those timers going. Start. Start. Oh, and let's go. Ugh. Almost there. All right. I think that worked out. I think I made it just in time. Let's check out how those photos of me and the head torch went. So it, it didn't take the photos. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna put the camera down. I'm gonna try it again and uh, Hopefully it'll work this time. Why didn't it take the photos? All right. Again, I'm out of breath. This time it worked though. Although I'm a little smaller than I was expecting. Let me just punch in here for you. There I am. Whew. Oh, it's just gone 4 a.m. I've been here about two hours and I've taken two panoramas so it's time to move on I think. It's almost time to head home but there's just one more shot that I know will look good and it's down on the beach. There's a, a natural window, a, a rock arch and it's got really nice views, both looking out towards the jetty and the beach and looking back along the coast. That's it right there. Just have to get down there. Drop my bags here. That was a tripod. And that that's the camera. That's the cave. Alright. It took a little while to get that shot set up. I was sort of working with balancing the how how big the hole the frame seemed in the image uh, with also like the amount of sky and where the Milky Way was and and also that that bluff or that mountain in the distance I just wanted it to all sort of uh, fit nicely together I I'd thought that this would be a single image but I'm actually making it just a two-shot vertical panorama because I want the final image to be square. I just think that's for this kind of thing I feel like it's a little more satisfying to look at um, and I've just got I've got this little light here that took a little testing as well because it's just meant to be low-level lighting but it's quite bright, so I've got to 
point it away from the image, uh, away from the cave. So the only light getting in there is what is reflecting off of these rocks here. So that took a little balancing, you know, some places the light was too bright and too harsh and it looks really unnatural. But I think I've struck a nice balance here where it's a bit softer. You know, it's not so much contrast within the silhouette of the frame, but there's still a little detail that's being revealed there. It's just one of the things you've got to try and work out. So now I've got the 10 images for the bottom half of the image and the 10 for the top half. The only other thing that's bothering me, you know, I've worked out the light and the composition. The only thing that's bothering me, if you see here, is that light. That's the light pole for the car park, for the jetty. And in the other panoramas, that was fine. There was a bit more context. You could see the jetty and the car park and where the light pole was actually, you know, attached to the ground or you could see Second Valley and you could see all the lights there. In this, however, it feels a bit more out of place because, you know, it's all, it's all rock and water and sky. You can kind of see the jetty, that bit of infrastructure, but the light is just, it sort of stands out on its own a little too much. So what I'm going to try and do is use it to my advantage. I don't know how well this is going to work, but I'm going to keep my eye on where that light is and I'm going to set up the timer and I'm going to go stand out there and hopefully I will be silhouetted in front of the light. So I'm going to take it from quite an obvious unnatural uh, ball of light into something a little more interesting, you know, hopefully it's not going to be out of place, it's just going to instead highlight me and add to the photo. I'm going to go try line that up and do that now. Alright, so uh, I made the mistake once again of having 20 second exposures. Uh, so I ended up having to stand out there for about three and a half minutes each time and it took not one, not two, but three tries to get it right. I tell you, the relief of seeing the back of the screen just then and I was right in the middle of that light and it was like, it's a perfect silhouette. Oh, looks better than I thought it would. Like, I was kind of worried it would blow out you know my arms and my legs you know the light would sort of wrap around and get rid of that and I'd look kind of like a mushy alien I also was worried that perhaps I'd be standing uh, sort of below the the silhouette of the rocks and maybe it would just be like a torso and arms up there that looks so good I'm so happy with that and I think oh, I think once I get it all together on Photoshop, it's going to look beautiful. Anyway, uh, that was my final composition for the night. So, all told, all said and done, three images. Honestly, I usually, you know, from a, a trip like this, I might come away with more than that, but these were big images, a lot of photos were taken and I think I'm pretty happy with it all. Alright, so now I'm going to pack all of this up to make it easier getting back up the cliff and back down to the car. And hopefully I don't encounter anything out there. There's a fisherman out on the, uh, out on the jetty. Must be looking for squid or something. I guess they're attracted to the light because he's like shining a torch in the water. And on the way up, <laughs> I looked around with my head torch and you know, uh, spiders' eyes reflect when you look at them with a head torch in the dark. And I thought, oh my God, that's the biggest spider I've ever seen. Like huge glowing eyes. And it turns out it was a kitten. There was a kitten up on the hill there. Um, probably not great. For the wildlife but it was very cute 
and it ran away once I started getting closer to it. But uh, hopefully no more wildlife encounters because it's dark and scary and I'm tired and I just want to go home now. But I feel good. I feel like I've had such a successful night. Might get two hours sleep before I have to get up and do stuff tomorrow. Today. Anyway. Packing stuff up. That thermos has tea in it, but like months ago Kate used it a handful of times, like maybe three times, to take tomato soup to work, I think. Like hot tomato soup. And now, no matter what I put in there, it tastes normal, but while I'm drinking it, I can smell tomatoes. And it just ruins, like, all the tea that I have out of there. Maybe I need something stronger, like coffee. Five twenty-six. So I've been here about three and a half hours. If you've made it this far, thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. Um, if you didn't like the video, I hope you at least like the photos. I feel like I'm gonna be quite happy with those once I get them finished. I'm gonna throw up those finished images for you right after this. If you wanna check them out, you wanna check out more of my photography, head over to my Instagram, it'll be linked below, or even my website. Anyway, better stop talking, better start driving. Thank you, and I will see you in the next one.